Welcome back. Welcome back. This is the pregame show network. I am Tali Carr, Atlanta, Georgia. We are talking Colorado football. We are talking Deion Sanders. We are especially talking Travis Hunter today. Let's bring in our man, our expert. We can't talk Colorado football without bringing in Uncle Neely, enjoying a little, a little early summer vacay uh, back home, Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, Neely, we saw this hat before. This is the second time, at least, I've seen the hat, only, only twice. And people had questions. They wanted to know, what, what, is the, what is the origin story of this hat here with the Jackrabbit? Hey, man, you just got to love that rabbit, man. Get down that rabbit. Shout out to Jack Rabbit. Keep on moving, keep on humping, aiming to please. <laughs> All right, we're going Jimi Hendrix as well. I'm enjoying, okay. I am enjoying the vibe today. The wind cries Mary. The wind cries NFL for Travis Hunter. But it is not a foregone conclusion. He doesn't have to go. He does not have to enter the NFL draft. He is draft eligible. Uh, this coming season, Neely, will be his third on the field. Uh, he played at Jackson State for one year. This will be his second year at Colorado. Both seasons uh, so far, he has not played a full season. He's uh, dealt with injuries both years. Neely, the question, it, it really hasn't been a question. It's almost like people just assume he's going into the draft. He's projected to be top five. Uh do you think it will come down to a decision for Travis Hunter at the end of this football season? Or do you think it's, hey, he's out of here? You know, great question. You're right. This has not popped up out there in mainstream media. Everybody's just assuming what he's going to do, and that means headed straight to the NFL. Let me keep along with your Jimi Hendrix thing playing off my shirt. Travis Hunter is indeed a voodoo child. He can stand next to mountains and chop them down with the edge of his hand. But we can take the view from an all along the watchtower. Look here, man. I don't know because I haven't spoken to Travis about it, so I'm just going to kind of read the tea leaves here. You know, NIL plays so much because these guys are already literally in valuation, making millions of dollars a year. I think it's going to come down to the type of season Travis has this year, where he places and lines up. Uh, as far as his pursuit of the Heisman. Uh, and then also, who else is coming out that year? Because no matter who else is coming out, he's going to be better than because he's playing both sides of the field. But I don't think that it's just this automatic foregone conclusion that anybody of that caliber is going to the NFL at their first opportunity of eligibility. You know, sometimes, man, the grass is greener where you are compared to where you may land in that draft picking situation. So, I'm going to hit the bets and say, not only do I not know, I wouldn't be surprised if he stayed another year. I mean, he's making enough money in college to buy mama a house. That used to be like the symbolic purchase of making it to the NFL. Oh, I'm going to get mama a car. I'm going to get mama a house. Kids could do that in college now, and his NIL valuation is him and Shador. Like, <laughs> they're, they're the top, you know, top two, top three in college football right now. Yeah, he's absolutely in the top five, and everybody's talking about him being a top five pick. Uh, you know, I'm just saying again, Tyler, I'll double down on it. I think that you have to look at what these kids are making NIL-wise currently in college, uh, the lack of expenses associated with that as well. You know, like you said, man, the goal is to get Mama a house. He's already done that. Uh, he's taken a Tesla and Hello Kitty, wrapped it. You know, he's got all the pajamas he can wear, and he's out there still, you know, fishing and being a kid. You know, I wish someone had told me in college, hey, man, stay another year. Adulthood ain't going nowhere. And I wasn't making millions of dollars a year. I was losing money being in college. But it, it's just you have to factor that in, Tali, just because a guy is now eligible doesn't mean they hop on that train. Uh, you see it all the time uh, with particular positions, particularly quarterback, uh, when people can come out one year or the next. They wait until the opportunity is right uh, for what team's needs are and where they're going to fall. I mean, you look how many times Bo Nix has waited and, and, and went high in the draft this year. So uh, no telling. I think it's, it's, it's all going to depend on how this season goes and its success. And uh, particularly as it relates to the Heisman campaign and other trophies he's out there in preseason favors for. You know, the only thing would concern me uh, and I think would concern just the, the average person who looks at this, Neely, is injury. Like you just you don't want to, you know, God forbid, suffer you know some injury that that debilitates your ability moving forward 
Um, and, and that's the thing that, you know, people in all sports from a collegiate level ha have always talked about. Like, you don't want to stay too long, get hurt, you know, mess up your position uh, in the pros. But if, if you take that off the table, uh, looking at Travis's personality as I see it, uh, I've spent a little bit of time around him when he was at Jackson State, not a whole lot. But even you can see now at Colorado, as much spotlight as there is, and, and I know he has his blog and, you know, he get, gets paid for that. Um, you sometimes, Neely, in the coverage, you got to go look and find Travis. Like, <laughs> he's <laughs> – you talk about him a lot, but, you know, he's not always jumping out there. You know, he, he doesn't have Shiloh's personality. Let, let's put it like that. Yeah, but he does have a magnetic personality. Travis is one of those guys – uh, you know, that he, he can be hard to find and elusive in the mainstream media, something I think will change, you know, this season with the Heisman push. Uh, but he is about the business, man. He goes to work and he goes home. And when he goes home, he's, he's doing his own vlogging, doing his video games because he's a gamer and getting his tackle box ready to go fishing. He's just a no-nonsense, about-the-business kind of guy. So you don't see him doing, you know, those press conferences after practice or after games. He avoids them when all possible because he's he's ready to go home like most of us, most of us are excuse me after a work day uh, i will say this when you get to know travis uh you couldn't ask for a better teammate or better person uh, his personality and sense of humor is off the charts uh the guy's a hell of a dancer he could be a, he could be in gymnastics he can backwards flips 50 to 100 yards without even thinking about it just a hell of an athlete in person and, and injury wise man we have to keep in mind that you know, the injury that set him out some at Jackson State was something that he came from high school with that Coach Prime pushed him to go ahead and have surgery on and fix it now because you have a long, long career, not only in college, but the NFL playing on Sunday. So don't let this drag out. Let's fix it as a freshman. So he did that. And then last year's injury uh, was not something of his doing like he's injury prone. It was a bad hit, an illegal hit from an opponent. You know, they quote unquote kissed and made up and hang out and go bowling, that kind of stuff together. Uh, but it was one of those things that happens in a full contact sport. So Travis Hunter's value, you know, he's not an injury prone guy, whereas he's not doing media every day of the week outside of his own. Uh, he has a personality that would fit well in any NFL locker room when people get to know him in that regard. But it's still totally hard for me to say right here before we kick off this fall season if he's truly going to leave or not. I understand the draw to the NFL. I understand that get go get that bag because that bag is right there. Uh, but maybe uh, one more season, the bag goes up even higher. Who knows? So I think it's going to depend on how this season goes. Well, the one thing we, we can say, Neely, for sure, uh, Coach Prime has had his NFL interest at heart from the very beginning. You know, he flips him to Jackson State. Travis was the number one number one recruit in high school. A lot of people tried to say number two after he went Jackson State. <laughs> we're, we're keeping that number one uh, coming out of high school. And uh, look, a lot of coaches might have been like, look, man, I, I need you on the field. Like, I need you, I need you, I need you. Uh, but Coach Prime has, and you said it, and if you follow the journey from the very beginning, has always had his long-term interest at heart. Absolutely. He's like that with all his players. Uh, you know, because all of them, whether biological or not, are his children, uh, the way he treats and handles and manages them, he's always thinking about the greater cause down the road, not the right now. So if you got to sit out, sit out now. If you got to get surgery, get surgery now. He's always had Travis's best interest at heart. You know, you were looking at uh, the Orange Blossom Classic, a game on TV down in Miami, uh, and Travis tried to give it a go and get ready that week, but it was just one of those issues where now it's time to sit because you don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize the bigger bag to come in the NFL. Uh, and so, uh, you know, even in the game where Travis got, got injured with uh, Colorado State, you, you had a situation where he tried to get up and go back in the game. You know, he was in the locker room trying to get back out there. Uh, but, of course, Cooler Heads prevailed and said, no, we need to go get this thing checked out. This could be more serious than you're feeling, you know, adrenaline-wise right now. Uh, so Coach Prime has those players' best interest at heart, man. And is always looking for the, the longevity of their playing career, you know, not what TV or, or the team may need in this moment, but what's in your best overall picture for your playing health and just your personal health going forward. And and Travis is no exception to that. So when Coach Prime was inviting him to Jackson State to go ahead and get surgery or, you know, take your time coming back from an injury in Colorado, you know, those were all just well thought out decisions, you know, not protecting somebody that's quote unquote injury prone. So I don't know how much, you know, 
uh, injuries, potential happening will come into play to a decision because it is just a part of sports. So, you know, you look at the NFL draft, what is it, late late April, early May? Is, is that kind of window for that? Uh, do you have an idea or a thought of when a decision might, you know, have to be made or, or would be a good window, you know, based upon wanting to have a successful season, wanting to keep the focus on that? But it's going to be a 50-50 conversation all year long with him and Shador. It's going to be what they did and what their draft prospects are in that conversation. And it's fun. Uh, and it's going to continue throughout the entire season. And, you know, when you talk to Shador or you talk to a Travis, you know, I know they think about it, but they don't talk about it. Like they're focusing on it right now. They're being present where their feet are. Uh, they're not talking about, you know, drafts or Heisman. They're talking about getting ready for North Dakota State, getting ready for the road trip to Nebraska, getting ready for the road trip to Colorado State. They are one week at a time, one practice at a time, guys. And as far as those awards and accolades that come with the draft, they know if they keep the main thing the main thing, those things will take care of itself. Having said that, I think you get about midway this season, you know, toward the bowl game, you do have to start making decisions about that. Uh, but here's another thing, Tommy. One thing that happens before the draft, you know, is the senior bowl. And one thing that happens after the senior bowl are the pro days. And, man, I cannot wait to see the attention of the world that is going to be either on the Big 12 Pro Day next year or the Pro Day at Colorado or both because the people that you have coming out of Colorado football, uh, including the potential of a Travis Hunter, it is off the charts. I don't think you're going to have, you know, even a place like Georgia that is going to be able to compete with the number of people that are going to be draft eligible coming out of one school. Neely, you can build an entire show around the pro day at Colorado. I'm talking, I'm not talking about just me and you, obviously we can do that. I'm talking about the highest level of networks. <laughs> I mean, I, I imagine there would be some level of uh, celebrity uh, there. I, I think just being there at Colorado's pro day will be like a place to be. And I think that there's so much attention around that, that uh, it might be like, unlike any other pro day we we've ever seen like it might be a made like a made for tv event like you're watching like battle of the network stars or something i mean i can see that and you add in the marketing mind and genius of Deion sanders coach prime as it relates to broadcasting uh the commission of the big 12 who absolutely gets it when it comes to putting the best foot forward show wise uh you know the big 12 has has historically done like a joint uh you know pro day for his players in the dallas area I wouldn't be surprised, man, if that moves to Boulder, Colorado, and it's live on TV like some of the other schools have been with all the networks there with interviews and that kind of thing because it's going to be a hot place. Two potential guys, Heisman, uh, Shador Sanders coming out, Shiloh Sanders, guys on defense, you name it, up and down that roster. So I know we got to get through this season. I know Travis has a decision to make. I know you got the senior bowl coming up for guys like Shador. And then and I think even, you know, Travis has been playing it because they've moved it down to, to juniors now. All of that is happening way before the draft. It's going to be an exciting year for Colorado football. But first things first, you got to get ready for North Dakota State. Absolutely. But here, we can talk about anything and everything because we are here for the people, baby. The people want to talk. So, uh, got to give the people, <laughs> give the people what they want. Hey, Joe, we got to give it to the people. All right. So, uh, let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, will Travis Hunter? declare for the NFL draft. It's not a foregone conclusion uh, that he has to. Should he? What would you like to see? Do you selfishly want to see him in Boulder for another year? Would you rather see him in the NFL after the 2024 college football season? Let us know what is on your mind in the comments. It's a great uh, conversation, and it's one that will continue throughout the year. You are watching the brand new look. I know you love the graphics because you told us. I'm glad you loved it. We weren't for sure. We had to make a judgment call, and it seems to be a success. The New Look Pregame Show Network. He's Uncle Neely. I'm Tali Carr. We'll talk to you next time.